Alright guys, so today we're going to be talking about the unit circle and in particular we're going to be talking about sine and cosine's relationship um, in regards to the unit circle. Okay, so for example, we have our unit circle already drawn out. Okay, so if we go ahead and put a point anywhere on this unit circle, right, so if we go ahead and put a point here, right, well, we can show that by drawing in a triangle. So for example, if you start at the origin, right, and you work your way to that point, okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and work our way down, right, we have a triangle. All right, so this would be considered X, and this would be considered Y, right? And we would call this point here X, Y, right? Now, we know that right here is going to be our hypotenuse. In this case, this is going to be our radius, which we call R, right? So if we go and look at our unit circle, we know that our radius, okay, when going around this unit circle is going to remain constant, and it's always going to be 1, okay? So again, we have this point here, x, y. We can put this point anywhere we want on the unit circle, right? And again, the radius is always going to be your hypotenuse when you do this, right? You can do it on the other side as well, right? So if you want more of a visual, right, we can do it on this side as well. And we get the same thing, right? So here's our point. We're going to call this x, y, right? Here is x, here is y, and again, here is our radius, again, or our hypotenuse, right? Now, let's talk about how sine and cosine kind of work into this, all right? So in order to do this, we first need to look at, okay, um, the ratios of trig functions, right? So if we go back to the ratios of trig functions, we get the following. We know that sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, okay? We know that cosine theta is going to be adjacent all over hypotenuse. We know that tan theta, right, is going to be opposite over adjacent. Now, for this example, we only look at sine and cosine here, right? We don't have to worry about tangent yet. We're just looking at sine and cosine. Now, knowing this, right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull, right, this triangle out of the unit circle so we can go ahead and label it here. So here, I'm going to go ahead and just pull it out so we have this triangle, right? We know that this is going to be theta here, our angle, right? Here is x, here is y, and here is r. Now, again, we know r equals 1 here. So, knowing this, sine theta, right, is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So here is theta, my angle. Opposite is going to be y over my hypotenuse, which is r. So, for example, you're going to get sine theta equals y over r. Well, we know the radius is going to be 1, so this is simply just going to be sine theta equals y. Okay, so sine theta equals y. We can do the same thing for cosine. Cosine theta is going to be adjacent, or x, right, all over hypotenuse, which is r here. And again, r is equal to 1, so cosine theta is equal to x. So what this tells us here is we can actually write, okay, these points around the unit circle the following way. Instead of calling it x, y, right, we know essentially what we're doing is cosine theta is going to represent x, right? Because think about it, cosine theta, right, is going to be this part right here, right? Sine theta, right, will give you the vertical, so this part here. So knowing that, we can go ahead and label this point the following way. We can say cosine oops, theta, comma, sine theta, right? So in other words, cosine theta is representing your x value. Sine theta is representing your y value, all right? And that's true as you go around this unit circle. So again, no matter where you're at on that unit circle, it's always going to be cosine theta, sine theta, right? X, Y. All right, and that is it.